Come out and play! I can't! I'm hacking! But there's portable hacking! What? Yeah, it's hacking you can do outside! PSP. You can hack outside. PSP hacking 101. And uh, that was Pox's ad spoof for the PSP commercials you've probably seen on TV. Hope you guys had a laugh at that. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> How long did that take you to animate in Flash? Uh, a couple of days. <laughs> How many hour, uh, days, huh? Well, you know, at night. A couple <laughs> hours a night for a couple of days. All right, so uh, what are we going to be covering today? Well, um, first of all, we're going to finish off our PSP to TV adapter. He, uh, well, part three. Part three. And it doesn't really involve PSP to TV in any way. No, just... Yeah. It's you'll, just you'll the see. process that this PSP <laughs> has gone through to get it to be viewable on the screen. Yes. This ah. is our uh, last resort. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually a pretty decent method. Yeah, it, it, it works. I don't want to ruin it for you. You have to see the segment. Yeah, you just don't get a PS2 controller compatibility thing. No. But you get to play the way it was meant to be played with the, with the controls of the PSP and the nub. and. Sure. You, Whatever you, know. you say. Yeah, if you had a real analog controller, I'd be like cheating, man. You couldn't do that. <laughs> Anyways, we're also going to be covering loading or running uh, games that require a firmware of 2.0 or above on your 1.5 PSPs. Yeah. It's still in its early, early, early beta stages, and they have some issues with some games running, and the games that do work have issues with memory saving. But now you can play GTA Togobot on your 1.5 PSP without having can't. to upgrade the firmware and downgrade yeah. again. You just can't save <laughs> or you know, continue on where you left well, off. You can on GTA. Really? Yeah, on Togobot, too. Mm, uh, they've been working on that for a while, though, with it's, the ISO reps anyways. Uh, well, yeah, that's, we'll get into it in a second. <laughs> Here we go. We. You know, you already know who I am, but uh, we've got a, a new... Person. Working under the alias of Jesus Stole My Prostitute, and by the way, your mother is drunk, and PSP Hacking 101 does not approve of that. Okay, anyways, back to the segment. We're showing you the new game loaders. Um, mainly, MPH's game loader, which will allow you to run the newer games that require the 2.0 and above firmware and the ability to run them on your 1.5 PSP so you don't have to give up all the fun stuff that you can still do on the 1.5s. Um, there's the MPH, which is the original, and he released the source code, and there's also Run UMD. Now, Run UMD is the simplest one. All you gotta do is just say, take Grand Theft Auto, and just pop it into your PSP, and run it. When you run the Run UMD program, the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to need to rip the 2.0 firmware to your memory stick. And in order to do that, you just hit the circle button and it'll go ahead and do that. It'll rip off all the files that are necessary from 2.0 and put them into a directory X on your PSP. Now if you want to use the MPH loader, you're going to also need these files that it's making right now on the memory stick. Now after this process is done, you just go ahead and press X and it'll run the UMD. Now this, this is just an experimental loader, so it doesn't work with a lot of games just yet. And uh, it, they've reported some problems with GTA. So if you're really wanting to make use of this, you're probably going to have to go and use the original MPH. Hopefully this will change in future versions. Now, Jesus, do you, do you understand what's going on here? Basically, Pox, what you're doing <laughs> is you're letting gamers run the new games on their old firmware by making the games think that they have the new firmware. God bless you, Pox. God bless you. Actually, it's not me. I'm just, I'm just spreading the news. It's, it's MPH and, and other developers that are really making this possible. So it is more the you that are Jesus. And somewhere there is a god who has come up with this infinite wisdom. Alright, so this is ready. <laughs> After it creates the dump of the firmware, 
Just hit X and it'll launch the game. Just check our uh, show notes and we'll give links to the list of games that are compatible with the different loaders. GTA on a 1.5 PSP. And all that was required was just to pop in the UMD and launch the eBoot. And from now on, all you have to do is just hit X whenever you go to it again. You don't have to re-rip the, the files to the memory stick. Pretty simple. You think you could do that? I think I can play the game. I'll have you around to do that. But obviously, the viewers out there are more computer savvy than Jesus is. Now the still trying to figure out the sandals. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the walking on water thing down? Yeah, well, you know, it's a challenge. But every once in a while, I pull it off just for parties. All right. So if you're using Run UMD, then it does everything for you. But if you're going to run MPH Game Loader, then you're going to need to take the firmware 2.0 and you're going to have to dump it into file format on the memory stick. You can either take the files that were created with the Run UMD and move them over to the appropriate folders, or you can use MPH's program, PS, AR Dump, or you can also use the MPH's firmware launcher, and there's a feature in there to dump the firmware files from one, f the updated format into the um, files format. Does that make any sense, Jesus? It makes perfect sense. Would you be able to repeat it if I, if I uh, asked you to? Basically what you're saying is you're going to need firmware 2.0 in files format. You can use the PSAR dump to obtain it or my firmware launcher and use the function to install firmware. Your firmware launcher? I'm sorry, what did you just say? Your firmware launcher? <laughs> Your firmware launcher. My firmware launcher. Basically if I had a firmware launcher, you could use it too. Now, the MPH loader can also be used with the UMD emulator, so you can actually run ISOs. Some people frown upon this, but hey, whatever, whatever you want to do, just be responsible. Whatever floats your boat. So, any uh, final words or something? No. Anyways, 2.0 plus games on 1.5 PSPs. Good luck, have fun. Alright, this is Pox, and I'm showing you part three of the PSP to TV adapter. As you know, part one didn't go so well, and uh, part two wasn't really a part two, and part three, we're just going to make our own. So here it is, the homemade PSP to TV adapter. So <laughs> there's a couple other adapters out there that don't void your warranty where you don't have to open up your PSP. And basically all they are is a little tiny security camera, a little CMOS camera that's just mounted up above the PSP and it's just sending video out by shooting what's on the LCD. Uh, a couple weeks ago I found a video camera for uh, five bucks and I figured, heck man, let's go ahead and make this ourselves. In order to do this, you're going to need a few things. Uh, what I did is I just got a chunk of sheet metal, uh, a couple screws. Uh, the hardest one was finding one that goes in, into the top of the PSP. Uh, I just used a piece from another broken PSP, uh, but I'm sure if you look around you'll find the right kind of screw. Uh, put a wing nut on the back of the screw that goes into the camera so I could adjust it or, or move it pretty easily. Um, some cardboard to make a little hood, but if you're in a dark enough room, you don't really need that. Uh, this is what I came up with here. Uh, it goes out pretty far compared to some of the more commercial ones, but it depends on the type of security camera you get and how, how wide of an angle the lens is. First off, you take whatever security camera you end up finding, a nice little one, preferably, or else you're going to end up with something really big hanging up on your PSP, and just go ahead and get a ruler out and you know hold it up until plug it into your to a TV so you can see what it sees 
and then hold it up so you can see all of the PSP screen and then you're going to know how high you're going to need it to be. After you get that high, go out and find a chunk of metal. Uh, if it's not the right saw size, go ahead and grab a hacksaw like I did and just chop it down to size. Drill a couple holes in it, one for where the camera is going to mount and one for where it's going to go into the PSP. Now the piece of metal I had was kind of thin so I taped two of them together to get, get it stronger because it was a little wobbly when I was uh, using it. But this actually works out pretty well. You know, it, it, all, it all depends on the quality of the camera. And this $5 camera, the quality isn't too fantastic, but it does work. And uh, as you can see right here, this is some of the output of it. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, when I had the PSP to TV adapter hooked up for a little bit there, it was crystal clear, but it was almost kind of a bad thing. On my TV, it's a, it's a 52 inch and it didn't look very good. Mainly because it's such a big TV and you can see every individual pixel. And it's kind of neat because using a cheap little video camera, it, it kind of blurs the pixels together just a little bit. So that way it's almost kind of like interpolating an image when you take you know, a really low res graphic and you pump it up to a higher resolution. It's essentially what the little cheap camera is kind of doing and it doesn't look too bad for watching videos. Um, some of the text is a little fuzzy. I'm sure it's this $5 camera. If you had a little bit better camera, if you went ahead and spent a little bit more money, it'd look better. Uh, or if you happen to have something already laying around, I'm sure you could use that instead. And that's what this whole thing about. This little project costs like 10 bucks, as opposed to go out and buying a $100 adapter. Uh, now that's just for video. Now for audio out, all you need is a mini stereo plug to a couple RCAs. And that's how you get audio out. And you just plug that into where the headset goes on the bottom of the PSP. So the audio is very simple. And then the video coming out of the camera, just plug that into your TV. And you're all set to go. And if you do have a problem with a lot of light, if you're in a fairly dark area, it's not much of an issue. But if you're in kind of a bright area, you want to make some kind of a sheath to cover this up with to block any outside light sources. Uh, and you just take some cardboard, or this is card stock that I, I took and I just cut it to fit around the PSP and the camera area. So you just put it on there like that. You might want to tape it on. Now I can't really take a whole lot of credit for this. I saw this way back when the PSP to TV came out. Somebody had, I think it might have even been the makers of it, they put out essentially what those, those other units are. It's just a simple little camera mounted high enough above the LCD to, to see um, the PSP's LCD. But that's how to make your own PSP to TV adapter. You know, what I did here was just kind of for fun. I'm sure you guys could come up with something a, a lot better. Uh, have fun. Okay. okay. And that was Pox's uh, little uh, project. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for like ten, less than 10 bucks, it didn't turn it, out half Yeah, the, the, it, the clincher was that you had managed to find a $5 bargain bin basement Fry's Electronics, Las Vegas. Little camera for five <laughs> bucks. <laughs> but, you know, the quality of it isn't, isn't that great. But, you know, like I said, but it's, it's not that bad. Especially when, compared to what I had almost working before. It, the, they both have their, their pluses and their minuses. You just have to give it a shot. And like I said, experiment with it. Now that you've got the concept, you can tweak it a little bit. Maybe use a little bit better camera or, or different materials to make it look a little nicer. But yeah, basic concept will work. Yeah, simple, easy. And the the loaders? Yeah, I've now that there's loaders, I can finally go back to 1.5 because I mostly have my PSP for games. And I mostly have mine for homebrew, uh, so and I, this is cool because now I actually be able to go out and buy some of the newer games and play them. <laughs> he doesn't play them though. Well, I can play them for a little bit. How, how long did you play Tokobot? I got past the first few levels, uh -huh. kind of column levels boss type people thingies. Uh-huh. <laughs> I actually try to finish my games. <laughs> yeah, and I actually try to finish the show. <laughs> so you've got more time on your hands for the show. I know. I know. I've become distant. Yeah, I've when's become... the last time you were in the forums? Okay, we're not going to go there. Oh, yeah. So speaking of which, <laughs> go to the forums. Sign up for the forums. <laughs> 
<laughs> subscribe to the feed. You'll be the first to get the shows. Um, uh, do they have the, the, the up- DVD threes out? Yeah. What about the updates on the T-shirt though? Have we? Oh. Have you told them about the issue with copyrights? Uh, um, yeah, we finally got some materials that you can order with our t- with our logo on T-shirts and hats and underwear and all sorts of stuff. Are we, aren't we aren't we running another design contest with our logo? Oh, yes. Because um, the previous contest featured a lot of copyrighted material, which we cannot use. Yeah, the logo or the PSP logo or the exact image of the PSP. <laughs> so We weren't aware of these issues until we started to try to print the T-shirts. And, and this go-around, we want to try and do some T-shirts with some funny slogans or something, like, you know, we'll tell you where to stick your firmware or something. And yeah. like, have, like, an arrow pointing towards somewhere on the body or something. Yeah. So give it another <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah, um... In the meantime, we got some simple stuff with just our basic logo on it. Uh, but the, the place that we're going through will allow us to put as many of these on as we want to. So, Cafe Press. The Cafe Press. Yeah, we'll be able to put uh, a few different ones to choose from on there. And for all you ladies, there's the thong. The thong. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't choose it. He didn't choose it. Death Girl did. She wanted one. If you need help, right. I must have put it show, then dial your operator. Okay, anyways, that, okay, don't get our readers. Yeah, yeah. That was episode 13. It's in the can. All right, see you guys. Come out and play! I can't! I'm hacking! But there's portable hacking! What? Yeah, it's hacking you can do outside. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. This has been a Two Smart Guys production.